for the last couple of weeks I've received a lot of requests to talk about dieting and how dieting impacts on our fitness and our health. So for this video I'm going to focus on what is called intermittent fasting and as a disclaimer I'm not an expert in fasting or intermittent fasting I'm just giving you the scientific basis around it and how it affects your fitness and your diet. Sound like your kind of thing? Stick around. So before we continue if this is your first time and you like the video don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. Let's talk about um, fasting, muscle intermittent fasting. What does it mean? Um, it's basically a periodic way of fasting where you restrict your calorie intake and this can be done uh, in two big broad ways where you are restricting it within a time frame. So say, that, uh, so say for example the 16-8 method you're restricting your eating period within an eight hour window and the rest of the 16 hours you are in a fasted state. This is what, what is called the time restricted fasting. Or you can actually uh, do what is called the alternate day fasting where you're eating, uh, say for example, you eat your dinner at 7 p.m. within 24 hours at 7 p.m. the next day, then you eat your next meal. That's a time restricted fasting. Then you have the prolonged uh, fasting period, which is called the intermittent calorie restriction, where you are staying uh, without uh, eating for periods of 12 and more uh, hours. And you can do this for a day. People do also for prolonged days. And then you resume to your eating habits after the specific days that you're fasting. And this is repeated over time. So that is the intermittent uh, fasting. I'm not going to be telling you how to do your intermittent fasting schedule. I'm sure there's a lot of information uh, in the internet. Let's uh, stick to what the scientific basis around this is. So what is new about uh, intermittent fasting? Because we all know fasting has been there for the longest period. Uh, so, what's a big debate about intermittent fasting? Is it worth it? Let's see. So, uh, for you to understand intermittent fasting within the context of health and fitness and weight loss, I'm going to explain to you what normally happens uh, when you eat your food, when you stay without eating for a long period. And I'm going to teach you this using... Um, uh, a window of uh, someone who has fasted for 48 hours. We are going to look at four cycles that usually happen when you do this. So, you eat your food. Uh, let's take breakfast. You take your breakfast. Within the first uh, three hours, what happens is that food is taken into your body. It's broken down. And then from the carbohydrates, uh, the sugar that is released into the blood it triggers a hormone called insulin and insulin is a hormone that is tasked with ensuring that the cells are taking this uh, glucose and prioritizing it as a form of energy in your body so without insulin the cells in your body are not able to take up glucose and this uh, carbohydrate form of energy to utilize it as a form uh, as a form of fueling the activities in your body. So, glucose is your preferred source of energy when uh, in a normal state of eating. Then, when insulin is released, it encourages uh, your utilization of your carbohydrate st stores in your body and the body uses as much as it needs and the rest is stored, uh, is stored in your body. So from three hours, then if you're not going to eat again, what happens is that the glucose levels in the blood start to drop and insulin starts dropping also. So what happens is that now your body starts using up 
the glucose stores that have been uh, that have been, uh, that have been made, and um, it will continue doing this based on how many glucose stores are in your body. So the first stage that you've talked about is what you call the fed state. You've just eaten your food. Glucose is released into your body, it triggers insulin, insulin activates the cells to start using up this glucose for cell energy, and the rest is stored in your glucose stores. Then, after three hours, we go into what is called the post-absorption stage. And uh, what happens here is that if you don't eat, then uh, your body will now start using your glucose stores and this happens from uh, three hours and um, in this state now because you're not feeding your body anymore and it recognizes that uh, now my work is almost done here its level starts going down what happens is that your body now starts using its uh, energy stores in form of carbohydrates that have been stored in your body and it will continue to do this as long as there are glucose stores and as long as you're not eating. Should you eat again, then it takes you back to the fed state where there's glucose being released, insulin goes high, and it uh, enables your body to prioritize carbohydrates and henceforth uh, glucose as its first form of energy. So say that you don't eat again and you are doing your intermittent fasting or a prolonged fasting and you're entering uh, your 12 hours margin, what happens? You now start going into what we call the early fasting, uh, the, the, what you call the fasting stage, sorry. Then uh, what happens in this stage? Uh, in the fasting stage, uh, at this point, depending on your energy, your glucose stores from the time you started your fast and how active you are, are you working out, are you into physical fitness, then from 12 hours to 36 hours, your body goes into what is called the fasting stage. What is unique about this stage? What has been seen is that at this time, most of the time, your glucose stores will now be depleted. So there are no more glucose stores for your body to prioritize the use of glucose. Then, this is where the metabolic switch now happens, which is unique when you do intermittent fasting or any prolonged fasting. What is metabolic uh, switch? It means that now your body does not have glucose as its primary source of fuel, so it goes to the next best thing. What is that? So it starts breaking down your fat stores. And this is where what you call fatty acids are released. But fatty acids are like crude oil. It cannot run a car. It has to be refined into usable en energy, what we call the ketones. So your fat stores are broken down. The fatty acids go into the blood and they go to the liver where they are made into usable uh, energy, which is ketones. And then you enter into a state of ketosis. Um, what is unique about uh, ketosis is that now your body is preferentially using ketones, breaking down your fat stores, and this is used to sustain your body for uh, prolonged exercises, so for uh, skeletal muscle uh, fuel and also for your brain functions should you continue to fast for long. And once you pass uh, the 36 uh, hour margin to 48 hours, you are entering into the starvation stage where this process is enhanced. So more fat stores are being broken down, ketones are being used to fuel your energy, and depending on how much you are, you need this uh, energy, especially if you're working out, then more of this is happening and remember this cycle can be broken once you start feeding so I hope that is clear during a normal sleep state you are going into the third state you go into the early uh, fasting stage which is a post-absorption stage 
and uh, in this state uh, your body is using up your stored energy and then if uh, you eat you go back this is for a normal uh, person that is not fasting you do not go into the fasting or the starvation mode you're just basically in the two uh, stages so is this starvation and fasting uh, mode where there's a metabolic switch only happen when you do intermittent fasting no it basically happens for anyone that chooses to fast for long periods for whatever reason so um, people ask do I have to fast uh, for me to go into this metabolic uh, uh, switch where the body is prioritizing my fat stores for energy? So this is where creating a calorie deficiency comes in. So any program that promises you weight loss is hinged on the underlying factor that they're still going to get you into a calorie deficit. What does it mean? It means um, you must burn more than you're taking in. And this can be achieved in two ways. So it's either you eat much less than your body's daily requirement and what that uh, pushes your body to do is that once it does not have the necessary glucose stores to use, then it will be forced automatically to start uh, breaking down into your fat stores. So this is where portions and con uh, portion control is important. Then the other way is burn more. How can you do this? It means start exercising. High intensity interval training, strength training that force your body to use up a lot or, or uh, to need a lot of energy expenditure is another way to achieve uh, the same calorie deficit and once you combine portion control and exercises good for you then you are in the real calorie deficit margin and remember all of us are different yeah? because studies around uh, intermittent fasting have shown um, um, that it does uh, for most people uh, lead to weight loss from between 2% to 10% which shows you that we all respond to this differently. Then um, one of the, of the other uh, benefits of intermittent fasting is in changing your body composition. Please make sure that you watch my uh, body type and how it affects your exercises and uh, your diet and I'll put a link uh, below because intermittent fasting then starts to shift especially for the endomorphs that are starting with very high uh, fat mass as opposed to non-fat mass. The other thing about, and I think this is the only unique um, thing about intermittent fasting and prolonged fasting, this is once you get into this sustained ketosis over time, it's been shown to trigger your body own recovery, uh, sorry, it triggers your body's own repair for the cells. This auto repair system has been shown to, re to delay aging. It also reduces the body's inflammatory process and as you know, the disease processes in your body are triggered by inflammation. So, these two unique things uh, are good in intermittent fasting as opposed to people that are on continuous calorie restriction. So, is intermittent fasting for everyone? No. Because these people, it's not recommended and you have to see your doctor and get a clearance before you do this. If you're pregnant, if uh, you're lactating, you're breastfeeding, children, if you have a chronic illness, please make sure before you embark uh, on intermittent fasting, you've discussed with your doctor on the pros and the cons uh, of doing uh, this. Then for women, because of the cyclic nature of uh, intermittent fasting, it can affect your normal internal body clock, the circadian rhythm, which is tasked, among other things, 
with hormonal control. And many people will report that um, they're seeing menstrual or other hormonal irregularities. So should you see this, please stop and see uh, your doctor. The other thing, intermittent fa uh, fasting does not uh, mean that the minute you break your fast, you eat all the wrong foods. Please, learn to feed your body with what is necessary and what it needs. So many once you break your fast, prioritize eating your macros, proteins, uh, carbs, veggies, and choose whole and processed foods. Try as much to do this 80% of the time. So, hope this was helpful. If you want more of these videos, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button.